Welcome to r slash malicious compliance, where we share stories of people conforming to the letter but not the spirit of request. And today we have three great stories, so subscribe, hit the like button, and let's begin. The first story, logistics manager thinks he knows how to get his material quickly and cheaply and doesn't listen to me. The second story, old boy comes into my work asking me to do a specific repair on his machine. The third story, Boss forbade changing hair color. And the first story is, Customer thinks he knows more about freight than my company, who's done it for 40 years. Shuts down his company because of lack of material. So, a little background. I work for a logistics packaging and warehousing company that delivers freight all over the world. We have lots of customers who have issues with getting material in time to keep their production going. And when there's an issue with material, they usually listen to us, since we know how to get something from A to B quickly. We have one customer who forgot to order material, and now is close to shutting down his production. Fortunately, the supplier who was in another country had material on hand to deliver. We notified the customer that we could get material to him before shutting down his production, but we would have to ship this immediately, so as to not delay his production. Now, since our company understands the needs of our customers, we usually just ship material, if we know it's needed and we can't wait for approval. This is the exchange that happened with me and their logistics manager. LM, logistics manager, customer, me, some guy who knows nothing about freight, PM, purchasing manager, customer. Since this material is also in another country, with a time difference of about 8 hours, you don't really have a lot of time to talk to people to get things moving. Day 1, LM, I need dimensions, weight, and also some quotes, so I can make a decision on how we want to move this. Me, I can try to get you that. But because you need it in a few days, and because of customs and the time difference, we really need this to move immediately. LM, I don't care, I need quotes, and also want to quote this myself. Me, okay, I'll ask out other office if they can provide that. I talked this out other office in the night, and we made the decision to ignore the LM and just fly it, because a shutdown in production would cost them thousands per hour. Day 2, LM, do you have quotes for me? Me, sorry I don't. Because of the time constraints that I explained to you yesterday, we ship this already. LM, what do you mean you ship this? I need quotes before I make a decision. Me, as I explained yesterday, if I had waited for quotes, we would have lost one day. You had made a decision letting us know a few hours after our other office and the supplier are already gone. Then to do customs and a flight plus customs here at destination would have taken another two to three days. Your production would have been minimum be halted for one to two days. We had no other choice but to ship immediately. So on day 4 they had their parts at the plant, but the logistics manager was not getting the freight costs approved, which means we were not going to get paid. I got a call from their purchasing department, who I get along with great. PM, hey me, I have this PO request on my desk, and my LM is telling me you've never given any quotes. I'm sorry but without quotes I can't approve this cost. Me, hey PM, here's the situation. Your LM screwed up and was going to shut down your production, because he has no clue how international freight and customs works. If we had listened to him, he would have shut you down. We decided to ignore him because of that and here's our email correspondence. I attached all the emails, even one where he said we should have shipped FedEx or UPS, which would have taken over a week to deliver. PM, laughing. I understand, I'll push this PO through, but from now on just do what he says, even if you know we'll shut down. Me, okay. So just the following week, we then had the same issue again with some other material. We gave him quotes which took one day and let him make a decision. Not being completely malicious, we even warned him we needed an answer immediately, so he would not have any problems. He finally gave us an answer by the morning of the next day. This meant we had lost two days already. Then we had to do the customs clearance at Origin, which takes another day. Day 3 material goes to the airport the next day. Day 4 flies the day after. Day 5 arrives at destination airport. Day 6, since it's the weekend, no customs clearance till Monday. The LM has already shut his production down by this point. Monday Customs Clearance We get pulled in for customs inspection. More delays. Parts get finally delivered to them on day 8 at the end of the day. His production's been down for two days already, and they're way behind. After this incident, we all get pulled into a meeting with the plant manager, LM and PM, to explain the major F-up that happened. LM tried to blame us for everything and says we took too long. Luckily, I have everything in writing, informing him what will happen if we do it his way. We get dismissed, and LM gets reamed by the plant manager. From then on out, LM hasn't questioned us since, and when we tell him it needs to be done a certain way, he accepts. Some people are saying that the LM has a corporate directive to get quotes. This is true. Like most companies, they do. 
But in this case, he didn't inform anyone of the problem he was having and tried to sweep it under the rug. That's why he was trying to get quotes. Before he started, in a situation like this, we would have all departments involved, and in the end they would say, just make it happen, we'll pay. But because he didn't want to look bad, he tried to hide it. The second story is, you want me to do exactly as you've asked, even though I told you it wouldn't work? I'm a what? This happened this morning. I work in a shop that sells and repairs chainsaws and other garden machinery. We're pretty well known in the local area, and because of this all year round we have an average of roughly a 5 week lead time on servicing and repairs. I know that sounds crazy. We've got 3 guys in the workshop working 5.5 days a week, and we are just always flat out. Due to the nature of our business, we deal with people and customers from all walks of life. In this case, the customer was a member of the traveling community and is known to us as being a bit of a nasty piece of work. Last Thursday, the guy, let's call him Blower Man, comes into the shop with his raggedy old leaf blower. The guy's about 60 and the blower is about 15 years old and looks like it's never seen a service. Before we get into it, I'll just outline one thing. The carburetor on a little engine like this is like the brain. There's a series of gaskets and diaphragms inside the carb that get the fuel where it needs to go, when it needs to go there, and in the right quantity. If the gasket are hard or broken or damaged, it won't work. But if a machine doesn't work, it's not necessarily the diaphragms. BM says to me, put new diaphragms in that, signaling at his blower. I said no problem, I'll book it in for you, the lead time is roughly 4 weeks. BM says, I'm not waiting that long, it just needs gaskets, why can't you do it now? I explained to him that I could do just the gaskets now, but I guarantee that they aren't the issue. I explained that the machine was old as the dirt, and that it was going to need more doing to it than just that. He disagreed and said it was only the gaskets, to do it for him and that he would be back on Saturday morning. I said no problem, I'll replace the gaskets for you sir. I replaced the parts he asked me to, and sure enough the machine didn't work. Surprise! BM comes in on Saturday, you done it then? Me, yes I've done it for you, but as I said on Thursday it still doesn't work. I'm happy to look at it and get it running for you, but again, as I said on Thursday, our lead time is roughly 4 weeks. BM, that's ridiculous, why doesn't it work? Me, unfortunately the machine needs a thorough clean of the fuel system, and looking at properly. The gaskets were rock hard and brittle, so they all tore as I took them apart, so that definitely was an issue, but there are more that need sorting to get it working properly. The cost as it is is 38 pounds, the gasket kits which you asked for is 20 pounds, and the rest is my labor. BM, I haven't got any money so I'll take it now, and I'll bring the money another day. Me, I'm afraid I can't release the machine without it being paid for. So he mumbles and disappears, and today he shuffled back into the shop. BM, take them gaskets out and give it back to me, I'm not paying that price. In this situation usually we'll charge some labor to undo work that's been specifically requested, when we've advised against it. It's a waste of our time, and it's boring, but in this case the guy was already winding me up, and I just wanted to get rid of him. Me, no problem, but it still won't work, because as I told you on Thursday and Saturday, your gaskets were dry and damaged, so they won't go back in. And so it still won't work. BM, whatever, just take them out. So I did, I put all the parts of his machine in a little bag, so that if he ever did want it done, it would be easy to access and less hassle. I handed him the machine and the bag of parts. BM, what the F is that? Me, that's all the parts. There's no point in putting it back together with the parts you need missing. It won't work at all. It would be pointless. BM, you're an effing con man. Me, I'm sorry? BM, you're an effing con man. You're nothing but a bunch of C's in here. Me, oh, okay. Well, have a nice day. BM, F your mother. This guy is 60 odd years old and he's resulting to schoolyard insults. Needless to say, he won't be getting the time of day when he comes back because he will come back. He needs a blower. This MFR was the first customer in the shop this morning. My boss asked if I'd like him to serve him, and I said it's probably for the best, as I'm not feeling too polite towards him. He straight up got some bolts and stuff for another chainsaw, asked how quickly we could fix another machine, which he got told he would join the queue for, and then, how much is a new leaf blower? The last story is, hassle me for having white hair, have fun covering my shifts. This happened about two years ago. I worked for a very popular supermarket chain in Australia. I'd been shunted there after their sister company went belly up. Now, I love dyeing my hair crazy colors. It's a quirk. It makes me feel more confident in myself. And as someone with social anxiety, it was a great pick-me-up when I was feeling down. When I first got transferred there, I had blue dreadlocks and we had a male manager. There was never any issue with my hair or dress standards. And I took pride in my work and worked hard. About a year after, we got a new store manager. Let's call her Sarah. 
Sarah had very clear-cut ideas about how her store should be run, and importantly, how her employees should look. At this stage, I had taken my dreads out and just had short purple hair. According to the employee guidelines, employees should appear professional and hygienic at all times. No mention of hair color whatsoever. However, the phrase professional is open to interpretation by management. You can see where this is going. It began as passing comments on my hair, such as, wow, that's bright, etc. But as other employees began coloring their hair, Sarah sent out a memo that no unnatural colors were allowed. I was very sad. Colored hair was a part of my identity and gave me the confidence I needed to interact with 200 plus customers a day. I decided I would bleach my hair snow white, so I did. Now, if any of you have done this before, you would know you need to use purple shampoo to counterbalance that brassy bleach yellow tone to keep it white. This is a fine balancing act. Don't leave the shampoo in long enough and you have yellow hair still, but too long and your hair can get tinged pastel purple. Well, on a few occasions, I left it in a little too long and my hair was the slightest shade of purple, not even pastel, only just off a light gray color. Well, that was all Sarah needed to gun it for me, going as far as to threaten to send me home without pay. As this was going on, I had become friendly with the bottle store next to the supermarket, under the same parent company, but a different chain of command. I would cover their staff's breaks, and instead of standing around like the others do, I would face up the store and help out. Well, the manager had noticed my efforts and poached me. The best part? Because they had a different chain of command and a different interpretation of the employee guidelines, I was allowed to have colored hair again. I immediately took up the offer, and the night before my first shift there, set about making my hair an effing rainbow. I get in there. My new manager loves my hair. My customers are raving about it, asking how I got it so bright, what brand of dye, etc. Well, good old Sarah spots my beacon of a head from across the supermarket and beelines it straight for me. But I was ready for her. I printed the employee guidelines and called our HR team just to get further clarification that I was correct in my interpretation. I had customers in the store, but this didn't stop her from trying to tear into me. Sarah, you can't have hair like that. Me, hands her the paperwork. Actually, I can. My manager has no problem with my hair, and the guidelines say nothing about hair color. Sarah, you're going to make my employees think that's acceptable. Me, when your employees mention my hair, I tell them straight out that it's not allowed in your store. Sarah, this isn't the last of it. I'm going to HR about this. My new manager later told me that Sarah had gone over her head to try to have me relocated to another store and went to her area manager and complained to him about me. She was told in no uncertain terms that my hair color is not against the rules, that she's out of line to even reprimand me in the first place, and that if she does not cease her harassment, she would have to take a permanent vacation. Epilogue. I love the look on her face every time I walked past. My mental health has gotten so, so much better since leaving that toxic work environment. Thank you for watching. Have a good one.